For prayer concerns this morning, would you please include Melissa Gold, who had surgery this past week, June Alvey, who broke her foot in Arizona. We're going to keep her in our prayers. Also, I'm, I'm sad to have to announce the death of Alice Johnson. She was um, in the nursing home, and she died yesterday. Her funeral is going to be Wednesday at Nelson's funeral home at 11 a.m. with lunch following. So we will be keeping Alice's family in our prayers as well. Um, we are looking for volunteer cleaners to be starting in May. We're going to have a sign-up sheet going around for that. Uh, we have a number of sign-up sheets today. So remember, as always, please be respectful with those sign-up sheets. Carrie, you got those? Thank you. So one of them, there are a number for um, volunteers, but also for cleaners. And, and again, try to remember to be respectful of people who want to just hang on to them during things like, oh, I don't know, maybe the service? Maybe, uh, whatever. Um, and Ruth. There you are, thank you, go ahead. Good morning. I am carrying this bundle of joy. And this bundle, Oops, is it not on? It's on the screen. Uh, a bundle of joy that you have the opportunity next Sunday also uh, during the fellowship time to come and help put these together. These bundles are the baby care kits that for God's work are hands, and we have been putting them together in the fall usually, but we have enough supplies that we would like to do it again. In this, is this spring? I think so, in the spring. We have um, all the supplies, the blankets, the diapers, and if you like, these diapers need to be finished. Um, all that has to be done is either pinky shear the edges or hang the edges. It's not a prom dress. You don't have to be good sewer. It's pretty easy. So anyhow, if that's something you could do, that would be great. So next Sunday, uh, after coffee time or during coffee time, if the church is open, <laughs> hopefully we're on plan A, um, we would like you to join everyone to come and we're talking about our precious baby care kids that not only go overseas but could be used here whenever there's a disaster. Many of them, we just think about taking care of little ones and you've lost everything. So hopefully this brings a little joy to a few people. Thank you. are ready for worship. Would you stand as you are able for the call for worship printed in your bulletin? From Bethlehem to Nazareth, from Jordan to Jericho, from Bethany to Jerusalem, from then to now. To heal the sick, to mend the broken hearted, to comfort the disturbed, to disturb the comfortable, to cleanse the temple, to liberate faith from convention. Come, Lord Jesus. To carry the cross, to lead the way, to shoulder the sin of the world and take it away. Come, Lord Jesus. Today, to this place, to us. Come, Come Lord Jesus. Jesus. We sing together hymn number three. Christ, the light of all the living.
printed in your bulletin. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who journeys with us these 40 days and sustains us with the gift of grace. Amen. Let us acknowledge before God and one another our need for repentance and God's mercy. Holy God, we confess to you our faults and failings. Too often we neglect and do not trust your holy word. We take for ourselves instead of giving to others. We spoil rather than steward your creation. We cause hurt to your father's feelings. We choose fear over compassion. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us as we seek to follow in your way of life. Amen. Hear the good news. God so loved the world that God gave the only Son, so that all may receive life. This promise is for you. God embraces you with divine mercy, forgives you in Christ's name, and revives you with the Spirit's power. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia.
see Jesus, not with his eyes, but with his heart. But the people, some of the people who were around Jesus, who could see, couldn't. They didn't know it was Jesus. They, they just, they didn't like him very much. So it's a weird story about people who could see but can't, and people who couldn't see but did. Huh? So sometimes, I know that sounds kind of weird, but sometimes you know stuff, not because you can see it, but because your heart tells you so. So, so this is one of those things where you, you listen not always to what you see, but sometimes to what your heart says. So, so pretty soon after we're, we're done here, Ju Pastor Judy, she's got a special thing to give you today that's gonna be kind of a, a thing about seeing. But let's, let's pray first, okay? So let's do a help prayer today. So, Close eyes and fold hands, and then we remember we take a deep breath just to remember we're here. Okay. God, help us. Help us see Jesus not only with eyes, but with our hearts. Amen. Okay, okay. So, Pastor Judy has this really cool thing. It's called a. a, a, to, a, a Optical? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Optical oh, uh, the, the, uh, illustration. Illusion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Optical illusion. Anyway, it means that it looks different. You kind of look at it and you see different things, okay? So she's going to hand this to you, and the, the, here's the deal. You look at the three dots in the middle, you just kind of stare at them for a while. And then you look away. And when you look away, there's kind of a, uh, what do they call it? After image. Yeah, yeah, yeah. An, an after image that your eyes will see. Okay, it's, it's kind of funny and it's kind of weird, but I think you'll like it. Okay, you got it. Yeah, I'll give it to you. Thank you. Can you not me? Thank you. Okay, so you can all have one of these slides <coughs> and you can go look at them and see if you can see the, the image afterwards. But maybe take them back and sit down before you start staring, okay? Okay, thanks for coming up this morning. Bye-bye. today comes from 1 Samuel 16, verses 1 through 13. The Lord said to Samuel, How long will you grieve over Saul? I have rejected him from being king over Israel. Fill your horn with oil and set out. I will send you to Jesse, the Bethlehem, for I have provided for myself a king among his sons. Samuel said, how can I go? If Saul hears of it, he will kill me. And the Lord said, Take a heifer with you and say, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Invite Jesse to the sacrifice, and I will show you what you shall do. And you shall anoint for me the one whom I name to you. Samuel did what the Lord commanded and came to Bethlehem. The elders of the city came to meet him trembling and said, Do you come peaceably? He said, Peaceably? I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Sanctify yourselves and come with me to the sacrifice. And he sanctified Jesse and his sons and invited them to the sacrifice. When they came, he looked on Eliam and thought, Surely the Lord's anointed it is now before the Lord. But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not look on his appearance or on the height of his stature, because I have rejected him. For the Lord does
does not see as mortals see. They look on the outward appearance, but the Lord looks on the heart. Then Jesse called Abinab and made him pass before Samuel. He said, Neither has the Lord chosen this one. Then Jesse made Shema pass by, and he said, Neither has the Lord chosen this one. Jesse made seven of his sons pass before Samuel. And Samuel said to Jesse, The Lord has not chosen any of these. Samuel said to Jesse, Are all your sons here? And he said, There remains yet the youngest, but he is keeping the sheep. And Samuel said to Jesse, Send and bring him, for we have not for we, we will not sit down until he comes here. He sent and brought him in. Now he was ruddy and had beautiful eyes and was handsome. The Lord said, Rise and anoint him, for this is the one. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the presence of his brothers. And the Spirit of the Lord came mightily upon David. From that day forward, Samuel then set out and went to Ramah. The word of the Lord. Our psalm today is a favorite, Psalm 23. Um, if you'd like to read it with me. And it starts. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in want. The Lord makes me lie down in good pastures, and leads me beside the waters. You restore my soul, O Lord, and guide me along right pathways for your name's sake. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, and my cup is running over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord. Our second reading comes from Ephesians 5, chapter, or verses 8 through 14. Once you were darkness, but now in the Lord you are light. Live as children of light, for the fruit of the light is found in all that is good and right and true. Try to find out what is pleasing to the Lord. Take no part in the unfruitful works of darkness, for instead expose them. For it is shameful even to mention what such people do secretly. But everything exposed by the light becomes visible. For everything that becomes visible is light. Therefore, it says, Sleeper awake, rise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. The word of the Lord. And this morning, because the um, lesson is so long, I'm going to just ask you to stay seated, but we'll still sing the Alleluia. Some were saying, 
saying, it is he. Others were saying, no, but it's someone like him. He kept saying, I am the man. But they kept asking him, then how were your eyes opened? He answered, the man called Jesus made mud, spread it on my eyes and said to me, go to Siloam and wash. Then I went and washed and received my sight. They said to him, where is he? And he said, I, I, I do not know. They brought him to the Pharisees, the man who had formerly been blind. Now it was a Sabbath day when Jesus made the mud and opened his eyes. Then the Pharisees also began to ask him about how he received his sight. He said to them, he put mud on my eyes, then I washed, and now I see. Some of the Pharisees said, this man is not from God, for he does not observe the Sabbath. But others said, how can a man who is a sinner perform such signs? And so they were divided. So they said again to the blind man, what do you say about it? It was your eyes he opened. And he said, he is a prophet. The Jewish people did not believe that he had been blind and received his sight until they called the parents of the man who had received his sight and asked them, is this your son who you say was born blind? How then does he now see? His parents answered, we know that this is our son and that he was born blind, but we do not know how it is that he sees, nor do we know who opened his eyes. Ask him, he's of age, he will speak for himself. His parents said this because they were afraid of the Jewish people, for they had already agreed that anyone who confessed Jesus to be the Messiah would be put out of the synagogue. Therefore his parents said, he is of age, ask him. So, for a second time, they called the man who had been blind and said to him, give glory to God, we know that this man is a sinner. He answered, I do not know whether he is a sinner. One thing I know, that though I was blind, now I see. And they said to him, what did he do to you? How did he open your eyes? And he answered them, I've told you already and you would not listen. Why do you want to hear it again? Do you also want to be one of his disciples? Then they reviled him and said, hey, you are his disciple, but we are disciples of Moses. We know that God spoke to Moses, but as for this man, we don't know where he comes from. The man answered, well, here is an astonishing thing. You do not know where he comes from, and yet he opened my eyes. We know that God does not listen to sinners, but he does listen to one who worships him and obeys his will. Never since the world began has it been heard that anyone opened the eyes of a person born blind. If this man were not from God, he could do nothing. They answered him, you were born entirely in sin. How are you trying to teach us? And they drove him out. Jesus heard that they had driven him out. And when he found him, he said, Do you believe in the Son of Man? He answered, And who is he, sir? Tell me so that I may believe in him. Jesus said to him, you have seen him, and the one speaking to you is he. He said, Lord, I believe. And he worshiped Jesus. Jesus said, I came into the world for judgment, so that those who do not see may see and those who do see may become blind. Some of the Pharisees near heard this and said to him, surely we are not blind, are we? Jesus said to them, 
if you were blind, you would not have sin. But now that you say we see, your sin remains. This is the word of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Let us pray. Loving and gracious God, we ask today for humility. Humility so that we can understand where we are blind and beg your Holy Spirit to open our eyes so that we may see clearly. In Jesus' name. Friends in Christ, grace, mercy, and peace from God our Creator and from Jesus the Savior. Amen. One of my favorite musicals is called Into the Woods. It's a Stephen Sondheim play in which all sorts of different fairy tales kind of get all mashed up together. There's Cinderella and Red Riding Hood and Jack, complete with the Beanstalk and the Giant. There's Sleeping Beauty and Rapunzel, and a baker and his wife who want a child, and of course, there is a witch. They all go into the woods to get their wishes, and they find more than they bargained for. In Act One, everything is just fine. Cinderella marries the prince, Jack climbs the Beanstalk to get the Golden Heart, and the baker and his wife have a child. But then there's Act Two. Act Two, everything starts to unravel. It's about consequences. The prince is unfaithful to Cinderella. I was raised to be charming, not sincere, is what he says. The giant's wife comes down the beanstalk to find who murdered her husband. And the baker and his wife find that having a child is not always what it was cracked up to be. So they all go back into the woods to find answers to their problems. But what they're really looking for is somebody to blame. They don't want to take the responsibility for the actions they took. And so finally, after it all, they agree that really the one to blame for all of this mess is the witch. That's why all the bad things have happened. Fingers get pointed all around until all the fingers are pointing to the witch. And so she sings a song. What's important is the blame. Somebody to blame. Fine, if that's the thing you enjoy, placing the blame, if that's the aim, give me the blame. You're so nice, she says. You're not good, you're not bad, you're just nice. I'm not good, I'm not nice, I'm just right. I'm the witch, you're the world. And then the witch disappears, and the rest of them are all left with their messes and having to decide how they can work together to solve their problems. Because finally, placing blame gets them nowhere. Which is what Jesus is saying today. Placing blame gets us nowhere. The disciples are all very concerned about who is to blame for the man's blindness. The Pharisees are very concerned about who is to blame for the man's healing, which was on the Sabbath. Nobody wants to take responsibility for their own actions. And they all finally, after a lot of finger pointing, come down to pointing at Jesus. Jesus is the one to blame for what's happening. But unlike the witch, Jesus doesn't just disappear and leave them in their own mess to solve their own problems. If we continued reading into the next chapter, chapter 10, 
we would hear Jesus tell this formerly blind man and the eavesdropping Pharisees that he, Jesus, is the good shepherd. He is the good shepherd who lays down his life for the sheep. Far from just throwing up his hands in disgust and walking away, Jesus stays with them and he dies because of them, willing to give himself into the hands of the Roman Empire rather than just abandon them. For Jesus, it is not about placing the blame. It's about sacrifice. After all the hullabaloo, there's a lovely little scene there that you heard at the end in verse 35. The formerly blind man leaves the temple, has been kicked out, leaves the Pharisees, and he's discouraged and disillusioned with organized religion. They have behaved badly, and he's wandered off, not sure what he's going to do now with this unexpected gift of sight. Jesus finds him, and they have a little talk. To this spiritual nomad, to the one who has left the church, so to speak, Jesus tells him the secret of who he really is. He is the Son of Man, which is another name for the Messiah. This outcast is the one who gets the inside scoop. The good religious people remain blind to Jesus' real self. And that's kind of a hard word for those of us who think of ourselves maybe as good religious people. So who's blind and who sees? It's hard to figure out. Jesus talks about how those we think see really don't. And ones who can't see, see clearly. And dear friends, I don't know that there's any way I can wrap this one up neatly for you and give you an answer. This story has a lot of hard questions in it. A lot of hard questions for us to wrestle with, and it really doesn't have a lot of answers. But I can tell you what it's not about. This is not about blame. So this week, I'd like you to do some thinking to yourself. Thinking about who sees clearly and who is blind. Our world right now is in desperate, desperate need of clear-sighted people. And the troubles we face are complex and slippery. Whether it's Ukraine, or abortion regulations, or school curriculums, the federal budget, election reforms, immigration policy, LGBTQ issues, white supremacy, global climate change, church decline, we are faced with lots and lots of really hard problems that demand clear sight. In an age of very divided thinking, we always like to believe that we are the ones that are clear sighted. We, can, we know and other people are blind. So this week, might I suggest that we all try to pause and listen. Listen closely. Where are those people that we agree with really blind? Where are those with whom we disagree most clear-sighted? And how can we all work together to get out of the woods? 
not only as a world and a nation, but also as a church and as people of faith. Who are the clear-sighted outsiders that we should talk to to help us see more plainly? Dear friends in Christ, may you be blessed with keen and clear sight as we all struggle to find our way out of the woods. Amen. We sing together this morning in your hymnal Number 768, Lead Me, Guide Me.
Sustained by God's abundant mercy, let us pray for the church, the world, and all of creation. <clears throat> Eternal God, you seal us by the Holy Spirit and mark us with the cross of Christ forever in baptism. Inspire us by your love, as together we strive for justice and peace in all the earth. Merciful God, creating God, by your word you have made all things, and you take nothing you have made. Teach us to perceive the beauty of the breadth of your creation, from the grandest mountain range to the smallest springtime bud. Merciful God, powerful God, you anoint kings and establish rulers. Guide the work of heads of state and elected officials. Encourage them to lead with justice and to remove barriers that impede the well-being of all. Merciful God, shepherding God, you lead us beside still waters and restore our souls. Keep watch over those who weep. Tend all who are sick. Comfort those who grieve. We pray especially today for June and Melissa, for Doris and Johnny, Jim and Gary, Sharon and Tony, Tom and Kathy. We pray your comfort for Alice Johnson's family and for all the rest of those on our prayer list and those we now name aloud or in the silence of our hearts. Give them your living waters always. Merciful God, God, our hopes, you fill us at your table with more than we could ever ask. Feed us with hunger for justice. Equip the feeding ministries of this congregation and community, especially our little food pantry. Nourish us so that we can sustain and nourish our neighbors. Merciful God, we lift our prayers to you, O God, trusting in your steadfast love and your promise to renew your whole creation. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Thank you always for your faithfulness in giving. Your gifts are what sustain and empower the ministry of Christ who died here in this community and around the world. You may put offering envelopes in the plates in the back or contribute online. Thank you for your gifts. Let us pray. God of good gifts, receive these and all our offerings as we present them in faithful service for the sake of your God. Prepare our hearts to receive you in this meal as you pour out your very presence through Christ Jesus, the wellspring of eternal life. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. You call your people to cleanse their hearts and prepare with joy for the Easter feast, that renewed in the gift of baptism, we may come to the fullness of your grace. And so, with all the choirs of angels, the church on earth and the hosts of heaven. We praise your name and join their unending hymn.
do this to remember me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this to remember me. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. We sing together the Lamb of God.
checking it. Um, and sit, sit toward the front, please, so that we can talk together more easily. Thank you.